<clears throat> until just edit it until you think it, it looks nice. In fact, use the scale tool more often to get things accurate. I usually I often <laughs> do not do that. I should use it more. In fact, I want this to be a little bit bigger, like so. And what you want to make here is is sort of an uh, an ancient axe. It's, it's not a modern axe that you use to chop lumber with or something like that. We want to make something with a little culture. So we're gonna make it uh, like an old axe, like you see in the movies, like you see in the Lord of the Rings, like you see in the games that are out. Now your axe may not look exactly like mine, but try to just try to make it look as similar as possible. Of course, uh, when you get more comfortable, make it your own. That is the best way to go. But once you're learning, it's easier if you just copy. That's the best way to learn the tools, and that's why what you're trying to learn. So what I've used here is just the move tool in vertex mode to move this around and uh, get sort of a feel for what I want it to look like. Now, this is not a sharp axe. I mean, this is like a flat, kind of boring axe. And uh, in order to make it sharp, I'm going to select the edge vertices, all of them. So if you can see here, while selecting up here, it selects the ones below as well. And I'm going to go to the scale tool. And I'm going to scale them small, scale them together, like so. And now it looks more like a blade from an axe. It's not perfect yet. You can always, I advise you, this is just a quick part for me to get the tutorial as short as possible because uploading to YouTube takes forever. Uh, like so, and it's, I feel it's, it's, I, we're, this is a low poly version, so of course it's going to be very crude and very, very edgy. So, but I wanted to make it a, a little bit more round, so what I do is that I select the edges in the middle here, as you can see, selecting all the edges along the middle, and I'm going to click the connect settings. And as you can see, it connects directly through the center. Now we get some issues here, as you can see, that we don't want. We don't want it to be uneven. So we scroll down here to find this X, Y, and Z. Now this is some trying out because, oh, I had it on the first one. If I click X here, you can see that my models is all screwed up. So just press Control C. What, it, what this does is it straightens it out on an axis. So if I press C here, it straightens it out on the Z axis. If I press a Y, it flattens it out on the Y axis, which is what I want. Which is what I want. Now, I'm not quite satisfied with how this looks. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if this is what I want. So I want to see it, how it would it look if it was a two-edged, two-edged axe. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna edit this a little bit more. That's a little too pointy. And then I'm going to go into the first tool that I probably shouldn't teach you in this tutorial because it's gonna be a little too much to remember. But I'm going to go into, on this p panel, which is Modify, which is where you edit. If you can see here, I click Create or Modify to go back into the Edit Poly mode. Now, if you click the, the uh, drop-down list that says Modifiers list, and there's a lot of functions that comes up. But if you look for the one that says Symmetry. then it will create a symmetrical model based on this sort of orange square that's here, which is the mirror. Now, its symmetry is the wrong side. I want it to symmetry the blade. So I click flip axis, which flips the mirror and it reflects the other side instead. And if I click on the plus on the symmetry here, I can edit where I want the mirror to be. So 
we want to get it to the center. We're going to click, right click, convert to editable poly, and we're going to go into hierarchy, click effect pivot, and center it to the object. This, this just affects the gizmo that I used to use to edit the object. Now this starts to look like a uh, sort of a, a war axe or uh, something that you might see in a movie, perhaps uh, even in a video game. It, probably more in a video game because it's very crude, it's very low poly. We're going to teach you later how to make high poly uh, objects, but we're going to start off with low poly objects. Now this is still too square. It's not round enough to sort of sort of feel like a, a grip, you know? So we're going to make it a little rounder. Now, the only way to make stuff rounder is, is to add more edges. So we click on ring here, and this, if you select one of these, and you click ring, it selects all the edges around that ring. And the loop tool here, if you click a loop, it selects the loop. It's quite simple. Ring and loop. This is the ring, and this is the loop. As you can see, you sh sort of just have to try out, try it out to understand the difference. It's it's kind of hard to explain the difference just right there. It's it's really a simple, simple task. Once I've created ring, selected the ring, I'm going to create a loop on top of the ring. I want it to be centered. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'm going to go out of the full screen mode. And I'm going to look here in the front view. I'm going to select these three vertices in the middle of the shaft. And I'm going to sort of scale them out to make more of a circular shape. So that's... Uh, it's more like what, what I wanted. Now, I already made this axe before, so if <laughs> design doesn't come this quickly to you as it does here, don't worry because I've already made this one. And I can show it to you later. Um, so here I, 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 I want it to feel a little bit thick, you know, I want the metal to be that's around there to feel a little thick. So what I do here is that I select the polygons in the center where the stem would be. And I'm going to click on this option right here next to inset, to the right of inset. And what inset does is that it basically creates a smaller set of polygons inside the polygons you already selected. As you can see. And you, you can control how far in from the edge you want the inset to be. So I say about yeah don't mind this nine centimeters this is a humongous axe of course you can scale that later um, well that's a, that's a nice size I like that so I'm going to accept and then I'm going, going to click on ex extrude right here on both sides about that much I'm going to click accept I'm going to go to the scale tool and I'm going to scale it in to make it more uh, a, a, a little slimmer, a little smaller. And uh, I'm going to select the bottom part, only the bottom, not the top this time. And I'm going to extrude it again to about there. And I'm going to make it a little bit slimmer. And, uh, yeah, probably just going to finish the grip. I'm going to extrude it again. This time a little bit shorter. Like so. I'm going to click the plus button to extrude again. This time I'm going to make it really small. You're going to see why in just a little moment. And I'm going to click plus again. This time I'm going to make it a big section because this is where the hands are going to go. and. If you're creating a video game character or something like that, you might imagine he had big hands or he wants a nice wide grip. 
So I'm going to click plus again. Nope, no, there I clicked the wrong one. So I'm just going to go down here to extrude and open the extrude settings once again. And I'm going to make another small one. And I'm going to click plus <laughs> yet another time to create sort of a uh, the end of the grip. Now, after that, I'm going to let's do this the simple way. Select all the polygons. Oops. There we go. We're going to select all the polygons. All the small polygons right here. Now, to select multiple, you hold you, you hold down control and you just drag over. It's really real simple. So now that we've selected all the polygons that go around, we're going to hit the extrude button once again. You get this sort of weird, like, what's this, you know? All you do is that you click on this other function that's right above the modifier and you select extrude by local normal. And what this does is it, it calculates the radius between the edges to tell the computer how to extrude the object. So we make it small. And what I'm trying to imagine here is that there's these sort of metal rings that sort of prevent the the hands from slipping. Function over form, as they say. And that's kind of a boring grip. So we, we want more of an interesting grip, so we select all the edges. Remember, it selects all the edges around. And we're going to click on the connect tool. And we're going to add like 12 segments. Oh, so now we got 12 separate segments. We're going to click OK. And we're going to go to the left view. And we're going to select every other set of polygons. Like so. With the control button pressed, we can select multiples. If you wonder how I zoom, just instantly, I've just pressed the Z button. And so now we have all the polygons around there selected. And we're going to click on the bevel tool. And we're going to select by local normal. Now, bevel tool works almost exactly the same way as the extrude tool. Except one thing. It's got an inset. So it's basically extrude plus inset equals bevel. Now some people just use the bevel. They only use the bevel and they never use extrude or inset. I like to separate them, but that's just me. So we're going to create sort of a ripples for more grip on the axe. This is just to make it interesting. It doesn't have to be just like this. When you make your axe, you can make your axe in any way you want. And after you learned all these tools, you can make anything any way you want. So uh, yeah, so that's I'm, I'm happy with that for now. And uh, I'm going to make the uh, nope, not extrude. Here I'm going to choose to uh, look at yeah. bevel. I'm going to bevel the cap right here. If I'm going fast, just watch the video again and watch the parts over and over, and that that'll sort of ease you into it. Now you may wonder, 